you're doing something to the screen. I'm messing with the live stream. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah, they're doing something to mess with mess with the live stream. <clears throat> hey, shut up, one, beloved. Yeah, the devil is doing something with the screen orientation. Oh my gosh. Let me see if I can unlock the rotation. Can everybody see and hear me okay? <clears throat> Can everybody see and hear me okay? Just need a thumbs up. Can everybody see and hear me okay? You can see and hear me okay. I just need a thumbs up. Yeah, I have to hold my phone in my hand because... They're messing with the uh, with the screen orientation. All right, shut along, beloved. I'm gonna go ahead and roll with it. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just jump into it. Shut along, Barack Obama, Barack Obama, shy, Barack Obama, Barack Obama, shy. <coughs> Call Halayma Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukhan Kadesh, of Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, <clears throat> risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles and great millstone. <coughs> Coming back at you with another lesson. Why do the heathen rage? <coughs> so one of the things about reading and studying the scriptures is we believe in Bible prophecy. So when we look at what's happening right now in China, China has been raised up to be the next military arm of the New World Order or the NWO. So we can take we can take that a step further because their their governmental system, their structure is being used as the example or the benchmark by which the rest of the world is going to try to emulate or to replicate their governmental model. <coughs> what I mean by that is China right now is on a social credit score system. Kind of like the old, if you were ever in ROTC or Boy Scouts, <coughs> it was a merit-based system. So you would get a merit for doing things that support the government or the mainstream in this example. But in the Boy Scouts, of course, it would be something dedicated towards that particular service. But on a global model, <clears throat> the merits are obtained by supporting 
the policies, the mainstream provisions, the acts that are being used to restructure the Lord's morality and his statutes. So that restructuring is unisex. It's unilateral. So the multi-governmental structure is being combined into one. One religion, one government, one people. Just like Antiochus Epiphanes tried to establish. <clears throat> so really, this is not a new idea at all. And you can reference that speech that President George Bush gave. September 11, 1991. Ten years prior to 911. So I need you to bear with me because they're messing with my screen rotation. So I'm having to hold my phone in my hand. <clears throat> so I want to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 2. <clears throat> Wait in one moment. I want to pull it up in the um, in the blue letter. <clears throat> Okay, and here we go. Psalms. And I want to look up that word rage. Psalms chapter 2. Start to, from the top. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? So what I said earlier, reading the Bible and looking at it from a current events perspective, which reminds me of 2nd Ezra chapter 9, the events, the circumstances, the heated tensions that the world is moving towards a artificial intellectual governmental structure <coughs> under AI, under robotics. So that means that the entire human infrastructure have to be refined and called back because jobs are getting ready to be lost. Manpower is no longer needed in a traditional sense, needing many slaves under the old model. So that is an obsolete model now. So now the world is undergoing transformation through an automated System. Let's look up this word rage. <coughs> rage. One moment. One moment. Rage. Seventy two eighty three. Ragash. Ragash comes from the Hebrew regash, which means a tumult, a commotion, to conspire, a plot. So this connects beautifully with Psalms 83. That word, when you go into that word conspire, it literally means to breathe together. So it is a conspiracy breathing ideas, thoughts, into motion, which formulate policy. Everything leads back to the digital implantable device to be in a tumult or a commotion. So China understands prophecy. Their, <laughs> their, their religious sect do. They're high-level priests. Every nation have a priest set up or the office of the priesthood. Already got scoffers. One moment. Yeah, they are hurt. So these are agents. Joe Carey. So China understands. When you look at China, even their elevators, the number four, is a unlucky number. 
That four connects back to the fourth son, which is Judah of Israel, that's prophesied to take them down. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's go here. Let's go to... Uh, so they have a priesthood by which they're getting these interpretations of prophetic events. <clears throat> Psalm 60 and 9. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? One moment. Let's, let's keep going. Psalm 60. Let's go up to verse 8. Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Philistia triumph thou because of me. See, so Moab is going to be brought down into servitude. So this is their lot that they're going to feel. But Edom is the head of this multilateral joint effort of the other nations, the United Nations. So the other nations are wandering after this model under the European Union and NATO, which is a Western mindset or Roman mindset. So that word Western is interchangeable with Roman. So Moab is going to fall with the religious, economic, military, and political system that they are in bed with. <coughs> so they're in bed with the great whore. They have become harlots under the system. They have decked themselves after her, which is in the Apocrypha. If somebody can post that, please. I think it's Second Ezra 16. But anyway, let's keep going. Let's go to Psalms. Back to Psalms and two. So the two key players is China and America, followed by their allies. <clears throat> Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So we're connected to the Most High through his word and his holy name. This is why we were taught the name don't matter. So what are we seeing? The Bible is being rewritten through artificial intelligence. The name is being re-prescribed and change to pagan names. So the entire Bible is being rewritten through AI. So they're changing the Lord's word. Let's go here to Brother Gabar Ayash, serving Yahweh Shai, 2nd Ezra 15 and 46. And thou, Asia, thou art partaker of the hope of Babylon and are the glory of her person. See, so this is mainly China, followed by the other Asian nations of Moab, followed by Ammon. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast debt thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. So when you look at Beijing, skyscrapers, they got harlot houses, just like Babylon. They're religious worships. <coughs> Verse 48, they got a McDonald's. So they got the same defiled food as Babylon. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. See, 
inventions. So all roads, all roads lead back to the MOTB, an automated socialistic structure, a communistic model built under or built by the blueprint of ancient Rome. Thou hast followed her that is hated and all her works and inventions. Therefore, saith God, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So Moab is going to be beat down to servitude, peasantry. But Edom must fall first. That is the power structure under Amalek, the 13 Illuminati families. Psalms 2 and 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. So the system is going to fail. The Most High is going to intervene. He can set off or turn on nuclear launch sites. The Most High don't need launch codes for these nuclear missiles. So he's going to set or activate these nuclear missile launch sites using the angels. I mean, there's several videos out and articles of nuclear launch sites being turned on or activated and deactivated. Just super, for, uh, what you call it? Spiritually or supernaturally. Spiritual phenomenon. See, right here. Brother Gabar Ayash, serving Yahabashai. Job 5 and 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So he's going to disrupt their planning processes. Let's go here. Through nuclear destruction, followed by the fire from the laser and chariots of the so-called UFOs. See, Psalms 2 and 4, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. So he's going to plead with them. It does not mean the Lord is going to, <laughs> is going to be begging. But he pleads. That means to render judgment. So he's going to plead with fire through the fury of his wrath. Psalms 2 and 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So Yahweh Shai is near, just waiting to be cleared to come back with the chariots of the Lord. This is why they set up a so-called UFO task force. So he's coming back to plead with flames of fire. Brother Gabar Ayash, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. See? So this is a very interesting, exciting time we're entering into. Remember, King David had angels or chariots dispatch to help fight against the Philistines. So we're going to see great signs and wonders. So Yahweh Shai is close. See, back to Psalms 2 and 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Our fathers used to say, 
this belt is going to speak. So the Lord speaks through his judgments. <coughs> he is known by his judgments. The right hand of justice and justice and, and judgment, excuse me. Yet have I set Psalms 2 and 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So the birth of Jacob is spearheaded by Yahawashai. So this is the birth of the new kingdom. Yahawashai being established on his throne. So that, ho that holy hill is the new righteous government. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So all these nations are getting ready to go into captivity. Pursuant to Jeremiah, verses 10, verse 11, verse 16. They know this. Why you think every government has a left hand and a right hand side priesthood? So their priests are telling them to speed up or expedite the artificial intelligence grid to link in all the citizens into the network using the implantable device or the might be. <laughs> Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So they're going to get their backs broken. Their military arm is going to collapse first, which is the daughter of Babylon. When you read 2nd Nazareth 15, it even tells you that these missiles are even going to go unto Babylon after or right in that same vicinity of reading about the judgments of Asia becoming like unto the harlot. So they're going to be broken, which means their scepter, their military arm, must collapse first. Every nation, it's standing upon its military and economic power base. So Yahweh Shai is coming back to take down the nation's militaries. And we know this by studying Isaiah 34. At least read the first five or six verses. The military arm must be broken in order to take down the political, diplomatic, religious, followed by the economic systems, which backs up their policies by their sword. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. So the Lord is raising up the tabernacle of David. That is the new military, economic, political, religious priesthood and new social architecture that's being established. So this is the real new order of the age under the men of the house of David. So what we're seeing is the renaissance or the rebirth of the Davidic dynasty. <laughs> Psalms 2 and 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So the elect fear Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and are going to rejoice in the salvation through his right arm. Let's bring in justice and judgment throughout the earth. So this is the order of Malak Tazadak or Melchizedek being established. The new priesthood. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When the wrath is kindled, kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled, but a little. 
Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So a holy kiss is a sign of reverence, respect. But at the highest level, it also worship, uh, represents worship. So Yahweh Shai will be worshipped and the men of the house of David under the new holy mountain and being placed back in the holy land, fulfilling all the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which includes new bodies, supernatural abilities, becoming extraterrestrials. So the nations will not be able to stand against the men of the house of David. Or they're going to be broken. Why you think the scriptures say they shall be broken like a potter's vessel. So the scepter is going to rest or dwell in Judah <coughs> and the house of David. The men of the tabernacle of David under Yahweh Shai. Let's get this and close out. Brother Ernest L., Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So the scepter does not depart out of Judah, which is our head, Yahweh Shai, and occupying the throne of his father, the tabernacle of David. So the heathen are raging by trying to expedite artificial intelligence and electronic and digital grid. The might be or the mark of the you know what, which is the new digital implantable device. And rewrite the Bible through artificial intelligence and automation. So for you scoffers out there, if the Bible is not true, why is there a global order to either ban the Bible, well, both ban it and rewrite it using automation. Why? If the Bible is not true. Even when you read Daniel 7, it tells you that the beast is going to be cast into the flames. Edom, followed by the rest of the United Nations following him. When we read Isaiah 34, verses 1 through 6. Hopefully, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. The tabernacle of David is being raised up from the graves, from the ashes, and from the dust of the earth. So be instructed, ye kings and judges of the earth, the tabernacle of David. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Plum Yasharala and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatun, Shalom.